Hey, good morning. Allow me, if you will, just an indulgent moment. My mom's probably watching. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Look forward to seeing you. Happy Mother's Day, Robin. I love you. It's been quite a week for our community here. Who could have imagined last Sunday all that would have transpired over the past six or seven days? And uh, I want you to know that we're glad to see you. We're glad you're well. We've been praying for you and your family. I want to thank um, publicly our team our Spirit Church staff that responded quickly and uh, just stepped out in the best way they knew how. Full disclosure, I, I had just landed in Atlanta on Monday night and got to the hotel when Robin said, we're, we're sheltering. And what do you do? You pull up Travis Meyer and you start watching from Atlanta. And um, we, we thank the Lord for his provision and protection. We thank the team that just responded quickly to see that people were served and loved and helped. Um, I do want to ask for you to be praying for the Heyman family and for the Wharton family who suffered loss um, in the Barnstall area this week. And I want to ask you to keep praying for the community of Barnstall. A really good friend of mine, Pastor Jason and Brenda Byers, pastor in Barnstall, and they're doing an amazing job coordinating relief efforts. Our district superintendent, Pastor Daryl Wooten, who was the pastor of this church for 18 years, reached out this week and, and asked our churches, would you help Barnstall. There's about 450 Assemblies of God churches in Oklahoma. And he said, would you either give to Convoy of Hope or would you give to Oklahoma Assemblies of God Disaster Relief? And we give to Convoy of Hope every month. So we already partner with them. And so Wednesday night in our board meeting, our board of deacons uh, unanimously approved $10,000 to go to Barnstall for disaster relief. And so I just wanted to let you know that that was taking place and that money will go, Pastor D will make sure that money gets to Pastor Jason and Brenda in Barnstall because there are boots on the ground. It's their town, it's their community and so they can make sure that the funds are distributed uh, in the proper way. Just forgive me for being so emotional uh, about it this morning but th this is our town. <laughs> You're our people and we love you dearly. Um, I want to pause just for a second and pray for the community of Barnstall. I want to pray for folks here in Bartlesville that were affected as well. And man, it's good to see you today. Lord, thank you so much that you are faithful, that you are still God when the winds and the waves come. Lord, that you are in control, even when it might seem like you are not, that you are faithful. Lord, today we lift up the Heyman family. We lift up the Wharton family during their time of, of of need and of grief. God, I pray that you would surround them. Psalm 34, 17 is such a powerful promise. You are near to the brokenhearted and you bind up their wounds. And not only those families, but a lot of families are brokenhearted today, but you are near. And we thank you for the nearness of your presence. I know the immediacy of the need has caused so many people to respond quickly. My worry, Lord, is that in a week or two, we're gonna kind of forget what happened. And I pray that you would continue to show us ways that we can serve, that we can give, that we can love, and that we can be a part of the restoration here in Bartlesville and as well in Barnstall. Thank you that we have the assurance of your great name and the confidence of who you are. We bless you today in Jesus' name, amen. And let me just mention quickly before Robin comes uh, if you would like to give to that disaster relief. We just took, that's money that we already had and so we're not taking an offering, but we do have set up on our online giving options. There's a button that says disaster relief. There's no pressure to give, but if some of you have, and so if you're just looking for a way to sow financially, you can do that if you just wanna give on a check or in an envelope, you can just put disaster relief and we'll make sure that money gets to the folks in Barnstall. So sorry to start with a heavy note, but we wanna take a second and recognize Mother's Day today. That's right, I was gonna say we're gonna change modes a little bit. When Jason said Happy Mother's Day, if that surprised you, we have cards in the restrooms for you as we do every year for Mother's Day and Father's Day. So while he's preaching, I'm giving you permission just to kind of sneak out. Um, fill and out if you sneak out, I'll call you out <laughs> while you're going to get your card. <laughs> Redeem yourself with that, yes. Um, but we also um, want to let you know that we have roses for all the ladies that are here today. So make sure you don't leave without a rose this morning. Um, we just want to bless you. We want to honor you. Uh, we have a photo booth out there if you want to grab a picture um, with your mom 
And then um, there was one other thing that I was going to I just want to honor all the ladies today. Yeah. There's a lot of seasons of, <laughs> of motherhood that people might be going through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we also, we realize, like Jason said, this is a little bit of a, this is a tough day for some. This is a mixed bag for some. And so we want to just acknowledge that, that we have had um, people who have lost their moms. We have people who have lost their children. We have ladies in our church family who want to be moms, and that hasn't happened yet. Um, we have ladies in our church family who have strained relationships mm -hmm. with their kids or with their moms. And so we just want to pause for a second and say that we see you, that Jesus sees you, yeah, that's right. um, that we love you. Um, and we just want to say, I just want to say a prayer over you today. So if you'll bow your hearts with me. Lord, we just thank you so much for moms. We thank you that you have just put um, a nurturing person on this earth to be the hands and feet of Jesus to right. her children, not only her biological children, but to the, all the people that are around her, Lord. And God, I pray for those who are suffering loss today. Lord, I pray that you would just be near to them, that you would be a comfort and a peace, Lord. God, loss of any kind that they may be suffering, Lord. Mm. It may be a physical loss. It might be loss of a relationship. Mm -hmm. It might be loss of hope. And, Lord, we just ask that you would bring hope into yeah. those situations yes, that Lord, feel hopeless, you. Lord. God, I thank you for your peace. Lord, I pray that on this Mother's Day, um, that you would just make that so, so real to people, Lord, that you would wrap your arms around people. God, I lift up every lady that is part of the Spirit Church family. Lord, mm -hmm. I pray that she would be crowned with wisdom and with honor and with the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, yes. in whatever role she plays with the people around her, Father. Yes, God, Lord, I pray that we would go that. forth in anointing, Lord. God, that we would truly um, share love, joy, and peace with everyone around mm -hmm. us, Lord. And I pray a blessing over the families that are represented by every lady that's here, God. And we just ask that today would just be a special one, whatever it looks like. We know it's so different for different people, Lord, but that today would be marked by your presence. Yes. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, baby. Happy Mother's Day. Well, you want to stand with me? We're going to get into our message series this morning, and I just want you to know I was doing just fine until Pastor Grant got up and prayed that powerful prayer at the end of worship. My emotions were in check, and so my tears today are all because of, of him. It's all his fault. But thank you for being godly and leading in the way that you do. So we're calling this series Epic Fails, and it's not necessarily an exploration of failure. It's a study of redemption. And how many are thankful that God redeems our mistakes? Right? God always redeems our mistakes. And the world wants to write us off, but God says, no, I'm still writing your story. And last week we looked at a man named John Mark who was a quitter but who God used in an incredible way. God redeemed a relationship with Paul, one of his mentors, and there was beautiful reconciliation. And many of you have approached me this week and said, hey, I, I, there's a reconciliation in my life, and, and because of the word of God, I have decided I'm not giving up on reconciliation in my family. And Robin, I've been praying for you this week, and we just believe that God's gonna do something, not because of, of certainly my preaching or who I am, but because of who God's, God is and because of what his word says that he's going to bring reconciliation in those in those relationships and so our in the vault text talks just about that first John chapter 1 verses 8 and 9 I wonder if you'd say it with me this morning together if we claim we have no sin we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth but if we confess our sins to him he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness there's lessons from this verse and, and we just try to mention them each week number one mistakes will happen number two jesus forgives number three we keep striving to live in the truth we keep striving we, we may be knocked down we may mess up we may miss the mark but we get back up in his grace and in his strength and we keep moving forward so lord jesus i pray for us today that as your word goes forth that there would not be any disruptions uh, God, I pray divine communication would occur, not from my voice. Nobody needs to or wants to hear from me today. We want to hear from you. We've come, Holy Spirit, to receive from you. Speak to us, challenge us, change us, make us more like you through the proclamation of your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. God bless you as you're seated today. If you have your physical Bible or if you have your phone, I want to take you to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 and verse number 36. And we're going to look at another story of an epic failure that was redeemed by God. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. If you don't have your Bible, the verses will be on the screen for you as well today. And here's a story about, about Jesus in Luke chapter 7. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on him. So full disclosure, this morning is my first ever time to preach on Mother's Day. Uh, I've been pastor three years. This is my third Mother's Day here at Spirit Church. I was an assistant pastor and worship leader before that. I was a youth pastor before that, and usually they don't let those guys preach on Mother's Day. And so this is my first ever time. Pastor D normally comes on Mother's Day and preaches for us, but he's going to be here at the end of the year in October, and he's going to preach for our 100th anniversary of, of, of the church. And so we booked him for October, usually because he's so good and he's so popular, you can only get him once a year, and so we chose the 100th anniversary this year. Just being honest, when I was in seminary, I don't remember them teaching us how to preach on Mother's Day. Either that or I just missed that day of class or I was, you know, on Facebook or texting, not that I ever would have done that in class, but wasn't paying attention. But I'm pretty sure if I had been in class or if there was a class about how to preach on Mother's Day, lesson number one would be don't preach about immoral women. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here, right? Like, so I'm taking a massive risk by throwing this out here, but I'm inviting you to go on the journey because um, this narrative, this story today just fits our series and it gives us hope because it's a beautiful and it's a powerful story. This story is filled with forgiveness and redemption and hope and love, but it didn't start that way. This story, somehow, somewhere, there was a girl who just got connected to the wrong crowd, and her innocence was taken from her, and her reputation was tarnished. Tarnished, she was most likely ousted for her family, and she wore every day shame and abandonment as a dress. And so the epic fail today was that an immoral woman was senselessly extravagant. And that's how the Bible describes her. It says that she was immoral. We don't know if that meant that she was a prostitute. It certainly meant that she uh, was a disreputable woman and she had a history. You know, people saw her and they started whispering or they looked her way and their preconceived notions in their mind, they were making up stories. We know that her head was uncovered and that was something that an upstanding, good Jewish woman would never do was walk around with her head uncovered. She used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. And that was something that a good church-going person would never do. They would know better than to do something like that. She was an immoral woman, but she wasn't just immoral. She was senselessly extravagant. She uses this expensive jar of perfume to wash the feet of Jesus. And everybody would have known that that perfume is not for feet. That perfume is for the head. And she should have anointed Jesus head with that oil not his feet with that oil and so behavior like this would have got people talking or certainly at the least it would have got people thinking and that's exactly what happened in Luke chapter 7 verse 39 the Bible tells us when the Pharisee who invited Jesus saw this he said to himself not out loud but to himself if this man were a prophet he would know what kind of woman is touching him she is a sinner then Jesus answered his thoughts not his words his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. That's when it's like, dun, dun, dun. You know, like, uh-oh. <laughs> Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Verse 41, Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that and Simon answered I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt that's right Jesus said look at verse 44 then he turned to the woman Jesus turned to the woman and he said to Simon look at this woman kneeling here when I entered your home you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair you didn't greet me with a kiss but from the time I first came in she has not stopped kissing my feet 
You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I love verse 47. I think it speaks to you and I in our generation today. I tell you her sins and they are many have been forgiven. So she has shown me, shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. And then to close the story, Jesus once again looks at the woman in verse number 48 and he says to her, your sins are forgiven. And the men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? Jesus didn't answer them. Instead, he turned again to the woman and he said, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. In just a second, we're going to look at how Jesus redeemed the epic fail because that's really the crux of this series is the redemption, the reconciliation, the restoration that Jesus brings. But before we get to that part, I, I would be so remiss if we didn't point out one powerful truth from this story. And it's this simple thought. Jesus loves all people. He loves all people because it's easy to take sides in this story, but Jesus is eating in the home of the Pharisee, which means he loves the Pharisee. He's allowing an immoral woman to worship him in this way, which means he loves the immoral woman. And then he allowed her to anoint his feet with perfume. He had the audacity to claim that her sins were forgiven. He, he spoke peace into the midst of our chaos. And you've probably made this observation just like I have. Our society is both good at and quick to alienate people for any number of reasons. And it doesn't take much to be alienated or marginalized or ostracized or be considered an outcast anymore. But Jesus is both good and quick at bringing people close to him and loving them. So before we go on, let me just ask a quick question. Have you ever felt shamed or unworthy or abandoned? You need to know that Jesus loves you so much. Have your words or your actions ever made someone feel shamed or unworthy or abandoned? You need to know that Jesus loves you so much and he loves that person so much as well. See, what we want to do as the body of Christ is strive to see people and love people the way that Jesus does. That's our goal. That's our ambition. That's our desire as we live life is to love all people in the same way that Jesus loves all people. So now let's get to the question of the morning. How did Jesus redeem the immoral woman? We know that her epic fail was that she was immoral and she was senselessly extravagant. But how did he redeem her? It's that one word right there, restoration. And it's a powerful world, word. Our, our world is good at tearing things down. Jesus is really good at putting things back together. Our world is good at breaking us down and making us feel useless and hopeless and isolated and that we can't make or see or find our way back through. But Jesus is really good about bringing restoration into our lives. There is no substance, no power, no authority on earth who can do what Jesus can do when he brings his restoration into our hearts and into our lives and into our circumstances. His work is transcendent. It's powerful, it's loving, it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. See, for this woman, Jesus did what only Jesus can do. And I'm gonna show you four things that Jesus offered her, and there are four things that Jesus offers you. He offers forgiveness, he offers a chance at new life, he offers hope, and he offers peace. Jesus forgave this woman's sin. Now remember, he did not deny that she had sin. He didn't skirt the laws. He didn't try to go and rewrite or reinterpret the Bible. He said her sins, and yes, they are many, have been forgiven. He acknowledged that she was a sinner, but he was acknowledging something more powerful than the fact that she was a sinner, that he's one who forgives sins, that he can forgive us of our sins. 1 John 1, 8 and 9, it's our in the vault text. We've been looking at it throughout this month. It says, if we claim we have no sins, we're, we're fooling ourselves. We're not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Jesus offers 
forgiveness. And if you're here today and you feel like you are unforgivable, if you feel like there is something that you have done or some action that has occurred and you could never be forgiven, you could never move past it, Jesus has already forgiven you. He's already offered forgiveness to you. All you have to do is confess and he's faithful and he's just. And when he brings forgiveness, he gives us the second thing, forgiveness and then new life and then hope and then peace. Let's talk about new life for just a second. Jesus gave her a new, fresh start on life. Her old ways of living and behaving and speaking and thinking, they were done, they were gone, they were behind her. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 17 says this, that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Can I just encourage you this morning that if Jesus has forgiven you, you don't have to go back to living the way you used to live. You are not defined by the sins or by the mistakes or by the transgressions that you think have defined you. And, and, and you know the part about this story that gets me is in that day when she walked in, they started calling her an immoral woman. And to this day, we still define her as the immoral woman, but Jesus doesn't. Jesus doesn't. He knows her name. He calls her by her name. And he says, you're forgiven. But you're not just forgiven. You get a new start, a clean start. The old things, your old way of living and thinking and acting and behaving, it's not just gone. I've forgotten about it. That's what the Lord says. He casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. And he says, now you get a new chance to do it my way. When the world has written you off, I'm still writing your story. I love that truth about the Lord. He gives us forgiveness. He offers us new life. He offers us hope. And hope was something that this woman had not seen a lot of. Her previous lifestyle was hopeless. No matter what she tried, it could never satisfy her. She was always left the same or worse. And I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who's struggled with an addictive behavior or um, some type of temptation that feels like chains around them that they just can't get free of, but they're always searching for the next high. They're always searching for the next relief. They're always searching for the next big thing only to find themselves disappointed each time. It's like, well, I, I've tried this drug, so I'm going to step it up to this drug. I've tried this type of alcohol, so I'm going to step it up to something harder. I, I've got engaged in this lifestyle, so I'm going to go even deeper. And every time they're left dissatisfied because none of those things can give hope. None of those substances, none of those ideals, none of those behaviors, none of those actions can provide hope. But Jesus does what only Jesus can do and he gives us hope. And I say this all the time, so I know I sound like a broken record, but if there's anything that this world needs more of today, it's the hope of Jesus. It's his hope. And today I, I want you to encounter and to experience his hope. Paul wrote about this in Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. I wanna show it to you. He, he, he writes this prayer to the Roman church, which now becomes a prayer for, for you and I today, and look at what he says. I pray that God, the source of hope, that goes back to what I was talking about just a minute ago. There's nothing on this earth that can provide hope like Jesus can, because God is the source of hope. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace. Why? Because you trust in him. And then look what happens when we trust in him. You will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say you're gonna have some hope. It doesn't say you're gonna have just enough hope to get you through till next Sunday when you can come back to church. It doesn't say that you're gonna have a temporary hope that's going to last a little while. It says you are going to overflow with hope. Let me just ask you a question. When something overflows, what happens? It gets everywhere. And I wanna be the kind of person that God's hope gets everywhere that I go. Yeah. I've heard it said before that as a pastor, my responsibility is to bring a lift, L-I-F-T, a lift into any room that I walk into. 
When I walk into a hospital room, I'm supposed to bring a lift, not because of who I am, but because I'm overflowing with confident hope. When I walk into your family's home and your child is sick or someone in your family has died, I'm supposed to provide a lift, not because of who I am, but because of the confident hope of the Holy Spirit is overflowing through me. When I see you at church or even at Walmart. Okay, maybe not. No, I think it could even happen at Walmart. We're supposed to be people, and it's not just, that verse does not say pastors. It says you, you, the readers, you, the believers, you, the followers of Jesus, you who are actively pursuing him day by day, that when we trust in him, he will fill us with joy and peace, and we will overflow with confident hope. That's the kind of people I want to be. That's what I want to be known for. That guy has too much hope. That guy experiences too much joy. That guy shares too much love. He seems to walk in peace. Why? Because the, the power of God resonant within us is enabling us to overflow with hope. And Jesus offers us forgiveness. He offers us new life. He offers us hope. But then he offers us peace. Jesus gave this woman, this immoral woman peace and you know when I thought about this message I was going to give her a name but then I knew no matter what name I gave her was going to be somebody's name and so somebody was going to be offended that I referred to their great aunt so and so as the immoral woman and so we're just not going to call her immoral anymore we're just going to call her this woman because she's not immoral anymore She's a new creation in Christ Jesus who's been forgiven of her sins, who is overflowing with hope. And because she is trusting in Jesus, she is experiencing a peace that passes understanding. And I don't know if you've ever encountered it, but when your life has been a mess, when everywhere you've gone, you were known as an immoral woman, can you imagine the stress and the chaos and the confusion of just doing her day-to-day -day business of just walking down the streets or visiting a store or trying to, to, to go to Quick Trip or whatever she was doing and people were looking and whispering and pointing and gesturing. And then in an instant, Jesus says, you are not that person any longer. Experience my peace. And, you know, we, we think about the peace that passes understanding. Jesus said it. John chapter 14 is one of the best chapters for our thinking about heaven. In John chapter 14, Jesus says, in my father's house there are many rooms or mansions that are there. And, and, and so he's saying there's, there's plenty of enough room. I want everyone to join with me. But then he says this before he leaves the earth and he goes to heaven, I'm leaving you with a gift. And do you think, what kind of gift would Jesus leave us with before he leaves this earth? What would be the most important, most significant, most useful, most practical gift that Jesus could provide to us before he left? He said, I'm leaving, I'm going away, I am going to return, but in my absence, I need to provide you with something. And this is what he says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace. Peace of your mind and peace in your heart. And the peace that I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. The next time that you feel like your life is out of control, the next time you're encountering chaos all around you, would you just remind yourself of the words of Jesus that he brings peace. Not only peace in your heart, but peace in your mind because our mind plays tricks on us. Our mind makes up stories of things that could or could not have happened. It's like what we say about anxiety. Most of the things we worry about will never even materialize. But because our mind isn't walking or experiencing peace, walking in or experiencing peace, it goes somewhere that Jesus never intended for it to do. And it makes up stories that Jesus never intended for us to, to, to buy into. And so Jesus says, I'm going, but don't worry. You're going to experience my peace. Now, clearly I'm not a mom. I thought I'd get at least one amen for that. But I do have the best mom in the world, and I'm married to the greatest mom in the world. So let me just talk about peace for the moms for just a second. Because moms, if we're being honest, you are often the ones who are holding everything together. I'm just letting the applause die down. 
And that's why we want to celebrate moms today. But we're doing more than just recognizing who you are as a mother. Our prayer is that you would experience peace on this Mother's Day. Because sometimes the rest of us in the room, we overlook the stress that is on you because you are so good at holding everything together. And moms need to experience peace because sometimes when a mom makes a mistake, she deals with the guilt from the ripple effect she feels like her mistakes could have on her family. Moms feel a, a great sense of responsibility because oftentimes their decisions effect, affect so much more than just themselves. And moms who are in the room today, you probably have not messed up like the immoral woman, but just as she experienced a turnaround and encountered peace in her life, just as Jesus redeemed her mistakes, Jesus redeems all of our mistakes and he gives us his peace. And Mother's Day prayer today is that moms would experience peace. Jesus says to this woman at the end of her story, he says, go in peace, your faith has saved you. And please understand, we cannot save ourselves. What Jesus is saying is actually echoed by Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. You have been saved, by, excuse me, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And it's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, unless anyone should boast. He saved us, he's done the work, but we put our faith in him. And mom's in the room today. Would you take just a moment and experience his peace? We're gonna have a second here at the end as we respond to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit speak to us. But would you walk in peace today? Would you just welcome the peace of Jesus into your heart and into your life? Let me just give you one last thought from this narrative today her epic fail this woman was that she was immoral and she was senselessly extravagant but Jesus brought restoration into her heart he got forgiveness and new life and hope and peace and I want to explore for just a second how she responded to the the restoration of Jesus and how we in turn should respond to the restoration of Jesus and it's just one simple word extravagance extravagance the world looked at her extravagance as a bad thing, Jesus welcomed it. Jesus received it. He didn't rebuke her for it. He appreciated her heart and her sacrifice. She brought this beautiful and expensive gift to Jesus. She was a person who had been forgiven much and therefore she was able to love much. And from this point forward, her worship was different. Her gratitude was enhanced. Her heart was healed. Her future was being rewritten. And that's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 7, verse 44, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she's washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. And then the verse for today, I tell you her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little only shows little love. The reality today is that what happened to this woman can happen to each and every one of us. And when it does, we should respond like she does, with extravagance. With extravagance. Extravagance that the world won't understand. Extravagance that the world will criticize. Extravagance that the world will deem unnecessary and inappropriate, but that Jesus loves. Because the most extravagant thing that we can offer to Jesus is ourselves. Did you bow your head this morning? I want to ask you, have you ever offered yourself to Jesus like a perfume that is broken and poured out upon his feet? Have you ever offered yourself to him? And so Lord, I may be flawed. I might be broken. I might not be perfect, but I'm giving you all of me, offering myself to you. We can trust Jesus. We can trust him with our extravagance. We can trust him with our hearts. He'll guard them. He'll bring peace. He'll give forgiveness. He's faithful. He'll give you hope. He offers a new life. 
If you're here this morning and you've never said yes to Jesus, or maybe today this woman's story has prompted something in your heart that has just reminded you once again, you need to be broken before him. You need to just fall at his feet and say, Lord, you can have all of me. I offer myself to you. He's ready to receive you today. If that's you, I don't want to embarrass you. I won't embarrass you. I just want to pray over you for a second. Would you be so kind if that's you, to, you're saying yes to Jesus today? Would you just slip up your hand and try to make eye contact with me? Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to give time. If you're, if you're online, you can put the word yes in your chat box as well. We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to say yes to Jesus today. I love that verse. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are gone and all things have become new. So the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Just like this woman was. So this morning I want to invite you to pray a prayer of confession with me. And I'm going to ask everybody in the room to pray this prayer together just so nobody feels maybe isolated or awkward. Let's pray this together. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I'm sorry that I have sinned and lived a life that was not pleasing to you. Today I receive you as my Savior and Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and make me more like you. And I will do my best to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're able, would you stand to your feet all across this house? We often close our time together by just asking a simple question. Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me? And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to say so much more than I ever could and so much better than I could ever communicate it to you. So we're just going to pause. We're not necessarily going to sing a song today, but we're just going to be still in his presence. And we're just going to let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Would you just bow your head right where you are? If you're comfortable, if you feel it's appropriate, you might even want to lift your hands toward heaven just in a posture of receiving. Say, Holy Spirit, I want to hear from you today. Holy Spirit, I welcome your presence and activity in my life. I thank you that you're communicating truth to me. I thank you that you're providing forgiveness and new life and hope and peace. And I want to return extravagant worship, extravagant praise, extravagant love. And I want to be broken at your feet today. Jesus, thank you that you love people that the world has written off. Thank you that some of them are in this room today. Thank you that you're still loving people, that you're still reaching people. You don't turn us away. Let's just listen to his voice for just a moment. so much for being here this morning. We're on the Choo Choo's uh, Spirit Church for Mother's Day, and so thank you for being here. Before we go, I, I want to bring a couple things to your attention. So uh, tonight, we will not have any next-gen ministries. Um, mothers in the room, if you have teenagers, this is our gift to you. You know, do with them what you wish. You know, make them sweep the grass, whatever you want to do today. Um, it's your day. So no next gen ministries tonight, uh, all ages. Again, we want to be intentional. Uh, they can have time with you. You guys can spend time with your families and, and, and visit if you, if you wish. Uh, and additionally, we, we also have roses as well for all mothers in the room. Um, uh, ladies in the room, if you would like a rose as you leave, uh, please grab one. Our shoes will be out there. Uh, take one. There's many different colors. Let's take one that you want. Um, I want to pray a prayer. Blessing over you before we go. So if you feel comfortable, raise your hands towards heaven. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We love you guys. Have a wonderful Mother's Day.